Okay, waves and ripple tanks, here we go. Describe the difference between transverse waves and longitudinal waves, two marks. Okay, a transverse wave, the critical feature is that the oscillations are perpendicular to the direction of travel, okay? And a longitudinal wave, the oscillations are parallel to the direction of travel, okay? So, if we have a transverse wave, if it's going in this direction, right, then the oscillations are up and down like that, okay? For example, a light wave. But a longitudinal wave, if it's heading in that direction, the oscillations are also parallel. They're not also in that direction, they're parallel to that direction because they go back as well, okay? So that's it. Example would be uh, a sound wave, transverse light, or light are EM waves, electromagnetic waves. Okay, so to get the two marks, one mark say transverse waves, the oscillations are perpendicular to the direction of travel, longitudinal waves, the oscillations are parallel to the direction of travel. Okay. Next question, describe how to determine the frequency of the waves in this ripple tank. Okay, frequency of waves is the number of waves that pass any particular point per unit time or per second, okay? It's in the name, frequency. So, we have the actual waves up here and a light source above them projecting an image of the ripple tank down here. So what you have to do is pick some point on the, on the image. You could choose this leg here, for example, or you could look at the end and see how many waves hit the end point. And you have to get a stopwatch, start the stopwatch, and count the number of waves that go past, let's say this leg here, that go past the leg in the amount of time you choose and choose a sensible time. Don't try and do it in one second, okay? Because you, you can't count accurately in such a short period of time. Choose at least say 10 seconds or 20 seconds or 30 seconds, something like that, okay? So start the stopwatch, start counting, pick a, put, uh, pick a point, start the stopwatch, Count the number of waves that go by in a certain time, say 10 seconds. Stop the stopwatch after 10 seconds and make a note of the number of waves. Okay? So, you'll have a recording of the number of waves, right? And the time. And the frequency, as we talked about, is the number of waves that passes that point per unit time. So per means divided by the time. Okay, so let's say you counted, this is just, these are just example numbers, nothing to do with the rest of the question, okay? Let's say you counted, let's say a number of waves, you counted 25 waves in, you measured 10 seconds, okay? Then the frequency would be number of waves is 25 divided by time, which is 10, and that would be 2.5. What's the unit of frequency? Well, look, 25 is a number. It has no unit, okay? Time is seconds, so it's 10 seconds. It's seconds on the bottom. So it's something per second. So it's, it's per second, or s to the minus one. And per second is hertz. So that means it's 2.5 hertz, okay? Again, I've just, I have invented these numbers here, okay? Just to give you an example. They're not asking, don't, ex on this exam question, okay? They're not looking for 2.5 hertz anywhere. This is just me giving you an example of what frequency is, okay?
Right, next bit. The screen is 80 centimeters long. What is the approximate wavelength? Right, okay, I've recreated the question here and I've tried to get the same number of waves in here as they have in the question. So, the distance from there to there on the image is 80 centimetres and if we know how many waves there are from there to there inside 80 centimetres we can work out the wavelength. It just wants the approximate wavelength, okay? So what you have to do is count the number of waves. So you go one, two, three, four, and I make it 19 waves in 80 centimetres, okay? So if you have an 80 centimetre distance and you have 19 waves in that distance, then 80 divided by 19 will give you the length of one wave, in other words, the wavelength. 19 is roughly 20, 80 divided by 20 is approximately four centimeters, okay? So they only want an approximate answer, so the wavelength is approximately four centimeters. Symbol of wavelength is lambda, okay? So lambda, sorry, not equals, roughly equals approximately four centimeters, okay? Okay, it's very important to realize that that four centimeters is the wavelength as seen on the screen, okay? I should have said that in the question it actually says what is the approximate wavelength as seen on the screen, right? So I'll just stress that here, as seen on the screen or the image, okay, down here. The actual wavelength in the ripple tank is different because you've got a light source here, it's projecting an image of the actual ripple tank onto the floor and the image is bigger than the thing itself. So the real wavelength will be less, maybe about one or two centimetres, I don't know. So that's the wavelength on the screen, okay? Okay. Right, let's move on. A student uses the image to estimate the speed of the water wave at 75 centimeters per second. Why is this not correct? All right, four choices. A, the student used a ruler with millimeter markings. I don't know if that's got to do with anything. B, the light was not bright enough. The brightness of the light doesn't affect the wavelength or anything. So, probably not that one. C, the student's measurement was inaccurate. The student uses the image to estimate the speed of the water wave at 75. Well, maybe it was inaccurate, but we don't know. D, the wave on the screen is magnified. Yeah, it's going to be that one. Okay, so like we were just talking about, you have an image of the actual thing down here. Be because the image is bigger, these waves in the image are going to move faster than the actual waves, okay? So like with wavelength, the wavelength of the image is different to the actual real wavelength. And the speed of the image is different to the speed of the actual waves. Okay, very important to appreciate that with this ripple tank setup. So the answer is D, okay? The wave on the screen is magnified. If you measure the speed of these waves, the image waves, they're going to be much faster than the correct actual speed of the ripple tank waves. All right, that's all there is. Okay, there we go.
fairly straightforward question to start off the paper. Just remember, don't confuse the actual waves with the image waves. That's the take home message.